Nicholas Copernicus is credited with setting the Earth in motion, which he did, and with putting the Sun at the center of the planetary system, which he came close to doing. He wrote of the Sun, In the center of all rests the Sun. For who would place this lamp of a very beautiful temple in another or better place than this, from which it can illuminate everything at the same time? And so the Sun, as if resting on a kingly throne, governs the family of stars which wheel around. Since I think people are probably familiar with Copernicus's system, there's not too much to say about it, except to point out for how it accounts for the observed loopings of the planets. Now, a Mars year is longer than an Earth year, which means that Earth passes Mars at regular intervals. Every time this happens, let's see what the apparent perceived motion of Mars is for us on Earth who are watching it. As you can see, as the Earth passes Mars, Mars appears to move backwards. So this explains the looping. On the other irregularity of motion, the fact that Mars itself seems to speed up and slow down, independent of the moving Earth watching it, Copernicus rejected the uneven motion created by Ptolemy's equant and instead used two epicycles per planet. But the effect of two epicycles versus the equant is observationally identical. Here is a Ptolemaic representation of Mars with the epicycle removed to compare with the Copernican system with two epicycles. As I fade back and forth, the position of Mars barely changes, and the direction it would be perceived in from the center changes even less. The difference is less than a minute, and is therefore observationally indistinguishable. In fact, Copernicans would often use the equant instead of the double epicycle when doing their calculations because the math is easier. Copernicus used these double epicycles because he insisted that only regular, uniform, circular motion could be found in the heavens, but the equant made unequal motion for the planet. Copernicus wrote, We must, however, confess that these movements are circular or are composed of many circular movements, and that they maintain these irregularities in accordance with a constant law and with fixed periodic returns, and that could not take place if they were not circular. For it is only the circle which can bring back what is past and over with. Many movements are recognized in that movement, since it is impossible that a simple heavenly body should be moved irregularly by a single sphere, for that would have to take place either on account of the inconstancy of the motor virtue, whether by reason of an extrinsic cause or its intrinsic nature, or on account of the inequality between it and the moved body. But since the mind shudders at either of these suppositions, and since it is quite unfitting to suppose that such a state of affairs exists among things which are established in the best system, it is agreed that their regular movements appear to us as irregular. So you see that Copernicus is a mathematician, not a physicist, and looks at everything from a geometrical viewpoint. He allows the Earth to have motion, but he shudders at anything non-geometric, for example, physical, actually moving it. And ironically, Copernicus's circle-based motion actually causes the planet to move in an oval, not a circle. Ptolemy had a circular path for the deferent with uneven motion, while Copernicus has a collections of even circular motions that make a path that's not a circle. Does this conundrum about trying to use circles suggest anything to you? Now, I said earlier that Copernicus came close to putting the sun at the center. Now, for him, while the paths of the planets do encompass the sun, their motions have nothing whatsoever to do with that big ball of fire. Instead, Copernicus used the center of the Earth's orbit to base the other planetary orbits on. That is, the entire Copernican system is based on the orbit of the Earth, not 
on the body of the Sun. While Ptolemy had the Earth at the center, Copernicus has the Earth's orbit center at the center, which is not the same location as the Sun. So once Copernicus had determined the center of the Earth's orbit relative to the Sun, the actual Sun played no role whatsoever in his system. Why didn't Copernicus use the Sun? Well, because he followed Ptolemy. More on that later. So the tables of predicted observations of the planets made using the Copernican system were much more accurate than those based on Ptolemy. Does that prove that the Earth goes around the Sun, that Copernicus was right? How much of the improvement was based on Copernicus's better data, his better observations? We'll return to this question after we acquaint ourselves with the third planetary model of Kepler's era.